Hey guys, Jay here. Welcome to another cosplay tutorial. Today I am making the melodic cudgel, I believe that's how it's pronounced, uh, which is Roman Torchwick's cane from the Ruby series. Not a lot to go into detail here, but um, I'm just gonna let you know if you can find a white cane that's already white, do that instead. This was a nightmare to paint. Um, it, it, I had to do multiple coats. It wouldn't dry. It was just horrible. Uh, so if you can find an already white cane, do that instead. Also, I had to paint in here this little, this is where the, the shells come out for the dust. Um, or it's what I'm assuming that's for. We never actually see that as far as I remember. Uh, but yeah, um, I had to paint that by hand. I put this on before I did that. Even if I didn't put this on first, I'd still have to paint it by hand because of how it is. Um, if you have an already white cane, when you put the top layer on with the cutout, it'll already be white and you won't have to worry about anything. And you won't have to worry about paint coming off or rubbing off or whatever. I did use clear coat, but that doesn't mean much when you're wearing leather gloves. Um, and especially if it's in the heat or something, it might, it might come off or something. The paint might get damaged pretty easily and I don't want that. Uh, but anyway, uh, rambling a little too much here. So let's get right on into the actual tutorial itself. To start, here's the base cane that I'm going to use. I just bought a one inch thick cane off Amazon. I get whatever you want. I also have here a strip of two millimeter EVA foam that I already pre-cut to the width that I need, which is done by measuring around the cane. And then after cutting it, I just keep wrapping it around and cutting a little more and repeating until it fits perfectly around the cane to the size that I want. And as you wrap it without glue, you can still tell if it's too wide and just cut and repeat until it's what you want. And that's exactly what I did. And you can see two silver Sharpie marks. Ignore the line that's closer to the top of the cane. That was wrong. I messed up. Uh, and the lower line is the correct one, which is where the foam will stop at. The strip is also longer than it needs to be, so I can cut the excess off later. And it's probably like three or four inches longer. Just make it as much longer as you want if you want to follow exactly what I do. And that is this thick nylon washer. And what I'm going to use it for is the tip of the cane. And then the overhanging foam is so that I have space to slot it into. And then on top of that, I'm gluing a metal washer, which is what's going to be touching the ground when it's set down so nothing gets ruined. Anyway, on to the build. I use contact cement to attach the foam to the cane. And remember uh, that contact cement needs to be almost dry and just a bit tacky before you can put the pieces together. And usually I use two coats of glue, but I decided to screw it and just use one coat. And it seemed to work just fine for this. As well as one more really important thing when you're doing this, please wear a respirator. These fumes are really bad for you. Even if you're like outside or in a well ventilated area, use a respirator, please, with contact cement. Or really any glue that is has fumes like that, which I'll be using another one later, which is a five minute epoxy, use it with that too. Anyway, I also forgot that there's a rectangular cutout near the top, which is what I believe is supposed to be like what you see on a real gun where it opens up and ejects the used bullet shell. I think that's what it is, but it could also be instead uh, where you load the cartridges of dust in for the series. I don't know, and I don't think they ever show what it does at all in any of the episodes. But anyway, I cut that out now on the glue side because I already glued it. So yeah, just do that before you glue it. And the size of the cut is going to depend on what size cane you get. So you have to figure that out yourself. But it's a little bit, just barely less than half of the circumference around the cane. And then it's just a rectangle that's longer than that. I don't know. And I'm stupid and accidentally cut it off center. Even though I measured, I have no idea how I did that. So I had to cut the extra off after I glued it to the cane. And I had to sort of try to get it back up off the cane because that part was glued down. So it doesn't look that great, but if you do it correctly the first time, it won't look like this. Um, I had to try and scrape away some of the excess foam that ripped off and it just didn't work too well. So it kind of looks bad right there. Just be careful. Then at the bottom, I insert the nylon washer and then without gluing it, and then cut off the excess so that it matches how high the washer is. Because remember, the nylon washer is where I want the foam to stop. And then on top of that is going to be the metal washer so that the foam doesn't touch the ground. And now that that long piece of foam is on, the only other thing I actually need 
to finish the main like the yeah, design itself is to add the two red sections one is kind of rectangular which goes directly at the top of the foam and the other is a long tip piece that it just has roman's jack-o-lantern logo cut into it but then it wraps around kind of weird i think it's cool though actually the, that logo is really dope but anyway i cut both pieces out of red two millimeter what the foam which is a much stronger type of EVA foam that I believe has some kind of rubber in it or something, and it's almost impossible to rip. But I used this red specifically so that I didn't have to paint these pieces. It is less work I had to do. Obviously, if you use something else, you use a different type of foam or different color or whatever, then you're gonna have to paint it too. Though you can buy regular EVA foam uh, that's red, so it's like you can buy them in packs or in sheets that are like either paper size, you know, uh, 8.5 by 11, or you can buy them in 11 by 17. I did just, oh, and those are inches, by the way. I don't know metric. Um, yeah, you can buy those at like Walmart if you really want to. You can just buy a red sheet and just call it good. Uh, so if you want to do that, do that. But if you use anything else, paint it, obviously. Paint it red. So I can't show you the actual painting process because I have to do it outside. And it's winter right now. I'm doing this in mid-December. So yeah, not really the best time for taking the camera outside. I only have the one that I really do. That I, This is my good camera. I'm not taking that outside. But I masked off the handle itself, the, the part that isn't covered yet, uh, with paper and tape. And then went to town with the Plasti Dip to seal the foam. I just used gray because that's what I had. Uh, then I used a dark gray metallic spray paint over that. And this isn't the most accurate. It's supposed to be just like a regular medium gray, but this is all I had. And I didn't want to go to the store or spend any more money. I've already spent a lot of money on this costume. I don't want to spend any more on it, but you can use whatever you want. This is for you to just follow what I'm doing. You can use whatever paint you want. The metallic looks kind of cool in a way, but it's not accurate. I also masked off a little bit of that area that's going to have the triangle-ish whatever piece glued down and that is so that I can glue that down without any problems. It'll just be foam to foam. The gray is sort of overlapping where that'll sit because it's not a big deal. So yeah, that's just so I have bare foam to glue to. And you might be wondering why I'm not masking off the tip. You can tell the tip isn't, you know, it's gray. It's that dark gray color. It's not masked off. So I didn't do the same thing as the top. Uh, that's because I can't. That gray color, the same exact, like that gray goes all the way down into the jack-o'-lantern cutouts. There's no way to get that in there without having to repaint that entire tip piece red, and then they wouldn't match. The two red pieces wouldn't match, and then I'd have to paint the other one, and it would defeat the purpose of me using the red in the first place. So, yeah, that I didn't do that. But that meant that I had to use a pen and trace out kind of the, where the design was when it laid on there. And it's annoying. It's a real, real bad process. Um, I used a thin pen, like a super fine point pen, like a regular pen. Uh, and kind of it, it etches it into the foam because the two millimeter foam that's covering the cane is really soft. So it... it it indents it basically so the outline of where I'm drawing indents it I screwed up a few times so you if you look closely you can actually see where some of it's all messed up in there there is nothing I can do I cannot fix that but I had to do that because that will tell me where the glue can go because I can't get glue on the parts that need to stay that gray so the contact cement can't go there uh, yeah so then I use just use contact cement it seemed to work just fine uh, normally it wouldn't work on paint like that, but for some reason it did. I have no idea why. It might just be this foam, but I also scored into it, which is where you take a uh, X-Acto knife or any knife really, but the X-Acto one for these small sections and cut little little marks in there, and then so the glue can seep in a little bit, so it'll have a stronger hold. That might have been what did that, but I'm not sure. But it's on there. So I'm just gonna call it a win and move on. Also, just so you know, uh, even with the score marks, I tried super glue and for some reason it would not stick. I think it was just too smooth of a surface that it just, the glue, even if it's going in the cracks and stuff, the little cuts, it still wasn't enough to make it stick. So don't use super glue if you do this. Anyway, uh, the last thing to glue in is the tip. I ended up using a couple of cone shaped grinding bits and actually I was going to do this I already had this idea before I even went and got those washers I want it to look like it's tapering inward 
That's not what the tip looks like. I just thought it kind of looked cool. But also, the metal washer, the hole in the middle, is bigger <laughs> than the hole in the middle of the nylon washer. So I had to widen it out anyway, so I said, screw it, let's make it look kind of cool and taper it. I don't know. It, his, his, when he shoots his dust, it kind of comes out in like a spray form. Kind of like when you spray a spray bottle and it comes out really wide. It kind of does that. I don't know why. So I figured maybe having it tapered like that might make it like, like maybe that'll make it spread out or something like in the actual like weapon. Like maybe that would cause that and it made sense to me. Uh, so it made it sound like that would be more accurate to what it looks like. I don't know. <laughs> it's just whatever I came up with. But yeah, so I the main reason was to widen that section out so that it was the same width at the top as the metal ring, as the metal washer, so that um, it looked like it was all one piece rather than two separate things glued together. For gluing the two washers together, this is what I was talking about earlier, I used 5-Minute Epoxy. Again, please wear a respirator with this stuff, it stinks really bad and the fumes cannot be good for you. This is the Gorilla Glue version, but any will work. Honestly, if you can find the metal version, the one that sticks to metal better, that would be better. But this seems to work perfectly fine. It's not coming off and it works just fine. But uh, the metal one is floor metal. So it, it holds even better and it'll have a longer hold where it's not gonna like try to come off on you or something. So to use five minute epoxy, uh, it has an applicator and then the, the box that it comes, or the packaging that it comes in, the plastic piece, that is supposed to be used as the, con the mixing container thing. Like you just use that the top side, I think, actually has the tray in it. Like there's a little a little square tra or rectangle tray. But I just flip it over and use the inside because there's just more room and it's easier to work with. Uh, and then in between both of the plungers, there's a little piece of plastic that you have to poke out. And I just used, um, I think I used a screwdriver, but I don't remember now. I'm recording this way after, obviously. I think I did that and hammered it out and like, pushed it out or whatever. Uh, and then you, you just put both it does both at the same time when you squeeze it uh, so you get both of the chemical things whatever um, then you mix them up with the applicator and you can use a brush if you want brushes work in a lot of a lot of places uh, but this applicator works just fine though a brush probably actually would have worked better but it's fine and then once it's a uniform color because it's two different colors once it mixes to a uniform color uh, then you put that on both halves of whatever you're gluing and then put them together and just let them be. Uh, if it's stuff that might slide around, you might need to like tape around it or something or figure out a way to make it stay in place. But that's, yeah, you just got to do that. And once it dries, it dries clear, which is awesome. And then I use the exact same epoxy, just a little bit more of it, to glue the washers into place in, in that little foam section. And I did the bottom where it's going to meet the bottom of the cane, as well as the sides on both pieces. Uh, and then just waited for like 24 hours before I moved on. After that, I ended up painting inside of the washer area. I made it black and then around the tip where it's like the bottom side of that jack-o'-lantern piece, uh, where it's right next to around the outer edge of the washer. I painted that and on the top of the top red piece, that triangle one. On top of that, I also painted that. Uh, both of those are red. Then the very last thing that I did was do the white sections and then clear coat. But, uh, and I wasn't thinking, and I accidentally glued the red triangular piece on before painting the white cutout section. So I had to carefully hold the tip up, which could bend your foam and make it uh, not straight. <laughs> so be careful, I guess, or maybe put that on after you paint that section. That'd probably be a good idea. But it overlaps like that in, in the design. So yeah, I had to use a brush on paint anyway. So I just was very careful and used brushed on paint in that section, which doesn't look that great, but it'll work. If you can make it look better than mine, go ahead. So after that section, I masked it well, once it dried anyway. And I also used a hair dryer to dry the, the acrylic paints. So there's that. Once it was nice and dry and everything was good to go, I masked off everything below the handle and painted uh, the handle itself, the curved handle, I painted that with a gray primer and then used a like a stark white spray paint over that and that's it. Uh, after that I hit everything with a matte clear coat and the cane was finished.
All right, so that's how you make Roman Torchwix cane from Ruby. So yeah, as I said in the very beginning, if you can get a white cane, that'd be better. The only one I found on Amazon was actually like thinner. This one is an inch wide. I mentioned that in the tutorial itself, um, which is the right size for getting this the way I wanted it. Um, the only white one I found was uh, one that's for if you're blind or, you know, um, visually impaired. Um, and it's super long. It was like 46 inches or something. This one was 36 and there's about, I want to say three quarters to a half an inch of, you know, extra here. But this was 36 inches um, before I added that. So it was like 10, it was, so let's see, 10 extra inches. So about, it'd be about that much bigger. And this already comes to here. So it would be like up to here. That'd be horrible. You'd need to cut that down. The thing this is made of, I'm not even sure if you can cut with the bandsaw without it like possibly breaking. Um, I couldn't tell what the material was. It looked like some kind of weird resin or something, but it wasn't wood. It did not look like wood at all. Um, if you look on in the inside of a cane after you take the tip off of it, because they all come with those rubber tips, uh, it did not look like wood at all. So I don't know what it is, what it's actually made of, but I was scared to cut that. So if now if, if I would have gotten a different one, it was made of the same stuff, I probably couldn't have cut it or, or cut it correctly. And that would have just ended badly and been a waste of money. But also, like I said, this one's an inch. The only white one that I found that I was just mentioning is seven eighths of an inch. Uh, so it's smaller than this and it doesn't sound like much <laughs> but like that's still a little like you can tell like an eighth of an inch but yeah it's not it's, it's just a little too small and it'd be noticeable to me uh but and you'll also notice like i had said in the tutorial the the red is all just bare what the foam um i realized i didn't need to do it in what the in red what the foam um, I mean, I could have and then just painted it, but um, <laughs> I forgot that I was making this tip protrude a little bit. So the whole point of using red was because I didn't want it to damage paint. And it's not even going to touch the paint anyway, so it wouldn't have mattered. So if you want to paint that, paint that, uh, do whatever you want. I do, however, wish that I would have used What The Foam for this top layer because this is very squishy. And I have to be very careful when I'm holding it because that could easily like my like a fingernail could dent into it and damage it uh it, it could just take a lot of damage really fast and also if this is in the car when you're going to the con or event or whatever event you're going to um if it's not in a box or something with padding around it um there's a good chance that if it you know hits up against stuff it could dent the foam so you got to be very careful about that this stuff would be very unlikely to have that problem this what the foam because it's a lot stronger but this softer regular foam will do that uh, so you got to be really careful there but that is going to be it for this tutorial if you liked it go ahead and hit that thumbs up subscribe for more and i'll see you guys later